Are you ready for some showtime? Hit it! Elgin, Wilt, West, Magic, Kareem, Kobe, Shaq, Worthy, Hearns, James? The list goes on, and you've heard these names discussed over and over, and now you want to be part of that Laker conversation. My name is Jeff Lurkey, and here's what you need to know and how to be a Los Angeles Lakers fan. Located in sunny California, the Los Angeles Lakers play in the Western Conference of the National Basketball Association. Their division is the Pacific Division that they share with four other teams. Their colors are purple and gold. The Lakers' accolades are incredible. 16 championships, which is second in the history of the league, 31 conference titles, 23 divisional titles with 11 retired jerseys, and 21 members in the NBA Hall of Fame. Are you kidding me? Fun fact, the team was founded in 1947 in the city of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hence why the name of the team is the Lakers, due to the city's nickname, the Land of 10,000 Lakes. The team was led by the sport's first superstar in 6'10 center, George Mikan. The team was coined the first dynasty in the league after winning five championships. When the team moved to LA in 1960, they were the first professional basketball team in the West Coast. The rest, as they say, is history. Ready to learn some of those names I said earlier? Here's my starting five of the Laker legends and who you'll need to be acquainted with in being a Laker fan. At point guard, I got Irving Magic Johnson. The 80s were spoiled to have this guy put on a show with his incredible scoring and passing capabilities, hence where the term Showtime came from. Five-time NBA champion, three-time NBA Finals MVP, and four-time NBA assist leader helped Magic to become the NBA's all-time leader in averaging assists per game with 11.2. To say the least, he's arguably the best point guard to ever play the position. It's no question that he's in the Hall of Fame. Ever wondered who was dribbling in the NBA logo? It's this guy, shooting guard Jerry West. Mr. Clutch, West was drafted to the franchise the same year that they moved to LA in 1960. The 6'2 product from West Virginia went on to become a 14-time NBA All-Star, an NBA champ in 1972, and won an NBA Finals MVP award, even when the team didn't win the title. He finished his career with an overall scoring average of 27 points. Guys, this was even before the three-point arc was introduced. Hall of Fame class of 1979. If West is at shooting guard, then I'm easily taking Kobe Bryant at small forward, aka the Black Mamba. Kobe was drafted right out of high school in 1996 and played his entire 20-year career with the purple and gold. Five-time NBA champion, two-time NBA Finals MVP, and 18 NBA All-Star, it's easy to see how the name Kobe became a household name in the early 2000s. It's a matter of time before this guy gets inducted into the Hall of Fame, especially when he's number three on the list of all-time career scoring leaders. At Power Forward, I got my man James Worthy, or Big Game James. Remember what I said about Magic being an all-time great assist leader? Well, Worthy was his teammate and helped electrify Showtime. Drafted number one overall in 1982, the North Carolina native helped the Lakers become a dynasty in the 80s, being a three-time NBA champion, NBA Finals MVP in 88, and seven-time NBA All-Star. His number retired and in 2003, a well-deserved spot in the Hall of Fame. The Lakers have been blessed with legendary big men to play the center position in their storied history. However, one guy dwarfs them all, and that's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Standing tall at 7'2", the UCLA Bruin was traded from the Milwaukee Bucks to the Lakers in 1975. Kareem went on to play 14 seasons with the franchise and became a three-time NBA MVP, a five-time NBA champion, and was a 14-time NBA All-Star as a Laker. He still holds the record as being the all-time career scoring leader with 38,387 points. It's a no-brainer that he's in the Hall of Fame. And that's your all-time Laker starting five. Knowing just one 
of those players will get you on the right track to Laker fandom. Now that we got the names cleared up, do you remember hearing sayings like the Memorial Day Massacre or Fisher's 0.4? Well, what's that, you ask? It's what I like to call snapshots. Snapshots are memorable moments in sports that are summarized by catchy phrases to easily commemorate the play at hand. Every sports team has them, so which one should you know as a Laker fan? There's a lot actually, but in today's lesson we'll focus on 33 straight. During the 1971-72 season, the Lakers won 33 straight regular season games, an NBA record that still stands today and will arguably never be broken. That same season, the Lakers blew past the postseason, winning their first NBA championship in Los Angeles, and its first for the franchise since 1954 when they were back in Minneapolis. It was also Jerry West's only NBA title. Truly a remarkable feat. Greatness always gets a target on your back, and the Lakers were no exception. However, the one team LA wanted to beat every time they faced them, especially in the finals, were their rivals, the Boston Celtics. Also known as the best rivalry in the NBA, both teams set a record in meeting in the NBA Finals for 12 times, starting with their first back in 1959, where the Minneapolis Lakers were swept 0-4. Boston has the upper hand in the rivalry, which is 9-3, having won the first eight throughout the 60s. It wasn't until the 1985 Finals where Magic and Showtime finally beat them, ironically on Boston's home court in Game 6. The rivalry spanned over decades of East versus West, with legendary player matchups. The 60s saw Bill Russell versus Jerry West, the 80s had Larry Bird versus Magic Johnson, and Kobe Bryant versus Paul Pierce in the 2000s. Remember how I said the Lakers had the second most NBA titles? Well, the Celtics have one more, 17 total. Isn't that just peachy? For us, these are the guys we want to beat every time we face them, and if they happen to reach the finals again without facing us, well then, there's no harm or foul in cheering for the other team. Nothing is worse than seeing that leprechaun smiling at you when your team loses in the finals to them. <laughs> at least I don't take it out on the Lucky Charms leprechaun, so that's good. That's good. Let's recap. The Lakers play in the Pacific Division. They have an arsenal of trophies, littered with NBA all-time greats that crowd the Hall of Fame. And you dislike the Boston Celtics. Why would you not be a Laker fan? So wear the purple and gold proudly when you go to the game and take it all in. The championship banners, the courtside celebrities, the Laker girls, because you in Tinseltown, baby. Nothing better than Showtime. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's Lurks Lesson episode. Please subscribe to my channel and also leave some comments on what other cool things Laker fans need to know. While you're at it, leave some suggestions of what other fan bases I need to showcase next. Alright, we'll see you guys next time.